This is a Gottlieb merry-go-round pinball machine. I have balls in place from previous game. I will start it up. All the balls drop in position. I raise each ball with a lever on the side of the cabinet and then shoot it. The object is to fill up the holes in the three rotating discs. And if balls fall here, then they'll stay there for the rest of the game. All holes have point values. You can see I'm filling up these side holes. And really what you're trying to do ultimately is you want to get a ball to go right here. When you do, you get a bell ring and then the merry-go-round sequence starts. And the balls end up here. So your highest score are right here. Balls that get around into this bottom trough or lane here are out of play, except for when a ball does rotate in this lowest disc and makes it down into here, you do get the uh, out balls back into play. It gives you back those balls so that you can fling them again. You get 10 balls per game. Now see that one's out of play. When a game is coined up, the coin slide will push here, and that does several things. Any balls that are in the outer holes, which are there, here, and here, there's four places, these levers will move so that it clears the hole, a ball can fall through. Any balls that are captured in the merry-go-round wheels uh, these three levers will hit some protrusions on this disc, causing them to rotate, and they are spring-loaded so they return back. And when they're at rest, the ball will sit in here and it will sit on this little ledge. But as you start a game up, rotating this will clear those ledges and all the balls will fall through. And then the uh, other two things that starting a game does moves this lever so that all of the balls that have gotten all the way through the merry-go-round wheels are sitting here, those clear, and also all of your out balls that are no longer in play or that you've lost, they're sitting here and they will... Here's clear. a condition where you have balls loaded on left and right of all three spinning discs and when you drop this one in you'll get a lot of different action. When a ball falls in the uppermost merry-go-round it sits on this little finger here so it pushes that finger down. I'm going to simulate that by raising this or tapping on this and that causes the merry-go-round wheel to spin. Each time you push the lever on the outside of the cabinet to raise the next ball in play, you're pushing on this arm. So raising the next ball into play will push this and that will automatically put additional spring tension back into all three of the merry-go-round wheels. So here I'll simulate raising a ball and that cocked these levers. Now there's additional spring tension to let the merry-go-round go. So if I were to drop the next ball in, it would go like that. And if the ball was to go into the next merry-go-round, like that. If a ball gets down to here, there. And then every 
ball that I raise into play will then automatically push these levers back and, and give additional spring tension. Now falling into the last uh, third merry-go-round has one additional effect and that is the balls that are sitting out no longer in play. If you watch when I simulate putting a ball in here as it rotates, I'll do it slowly first. As this starts to rotate, back here there's these four levers which activate this little hook and so when the hook is pushed backwards or pushed out of the way deflected here it opens this door for your balls that are out of play to go back into play you can continue to to get those all right so i'll simulate this once again and you'll see this very quickly open this door right there and I'll show you a little close-up shot where here I have one ball that's out. Uh, this one has made it to the highest scoring position of 2,000 points. And this ball, I'll let it fly and I'll grab it and put it in the center so you can see the merry-go-round feature work. And getting this one to rotate, notice my ball that was sitting here out of play is now gone. I can actually bring it back into play. And this time I'll have one out and I'll put the ball up here and then go down so you can see how rotating this one will clear this out. So here we go. Put it in. And that dropped in. So Get to keep playing until all of your balls are on the table. And we'll have another one. Right there. That was it. And so all 10 balls are out on the table and you add up the score. So 200, 400, that's worth two. That's worth 4,000 uh, here, and these are worth 2,000 apiece. Add it all up, and that's your score. Up towards the top of the play field where the first merry-go-round is, there's two sets of contacts, one right here and one right here. And it's a series circuit. When both contacts are closed, it lets electricity flow to the bell to ring it. What happens is right now the contacts right under here are open because this contact or that finger is sitting up on this little ledge and when I get a ball drop in here I'll let this rotate slowly. So as it starts to rotate what happens is this falls off the ledge closing these contacts and so for this whole quarter of a rotation, contacts are closed. These contacts are already closed. We have a complete circuit. Bell is ringing. And then we get to the end of this first rotation. And this next ledge will lift up and open the contacts. Bell stops ringing. These contacts are here so that if the bell's ringing and I go to load the next ball in, the next ball gets loaded up onto the play field. As this opens up, then that breaks the circuit. So they didn't want the, uh, the bell to ring if, if you were somehow holding this in the up position, then completing it, the bell wouldn't ring. Not really sure why they wanted to add that second one, but there it is. Here's a close-up. I'll simulate dropping one ball in by pushing on this lever. Do it again. And then winding it when you raise the ball up. And I'll show you the same thing from the other side. And I'll hit this lever right here. 
And you can see what happens when I go to wind this back up, how there's a little ratchet right here. So I'll push on this and that's winding it. Right there's my open contacts that will close when I fall off of this ledge as I do a one quarter rotation. Underneath the cabinet we have six volt lantern batteries going to the bell and then I put on these bullet connectors just allow me to be able to disconnect the play field and remove it. The balls go in this trough and end up here. I'm going to raise the next one up. Raise like that and onto the play field. When I got this game, uh, pressing this lever to raise the ball was not uh, putting, you know, loading these spring levers. And so after just a couple rotations, uh, you'd be out of all spring force. And this lever was not getting activated. So looking under here, yeah, I don't have a, a good model or working one to compare it to. But it looked to me like it would work if I made this little bracket. So I just put that on here. And then when you drop the play field in place, this little notch, it'll go and drop into right here. The notch drops in here and grabs this. So when you push on the handle, it does activate that. And reload the spring levers. All right, here's an example of a fully loaded merry-go-round with balls in it and I'll drop one in the top here. So I just got two, four, six, eight thousand points with that one ball. And you hear it reload the spring, I'll drop one in. So on and so forth. That's how it works. For more information, visit GameRoomRepair.com.